have received several requests to revisit the topic of jQuery and Ajax, since the episodes I have dedicated to that are a little out of date. So this episode will be a little more beginner focused, but it's a fun topic, so let's get started. What I have here is a simple task list application where users can create a new task, let's say learn karate, and then they can create it. And they can also check a task off or remove a task, and that's it. Now each of these actions are requiring this page to fully reload in the browser, but my goal here is to add Ajax so all this can be done without this page reloading. Now jQuery makes accomplishing this much easier, so it's nice that Rails has jQuery included and ready to go out of the box. It also includes this file called jQuery UJS, which stands for unobtrusive JavaScript. This adds some JavaScript behavior without you having to add any JavaScript code in line in the HTML. You can see this in action. If I try to remove a task, I get this confirmation dialog, which is handled using JavaScript. But if I inspect this HTML element and take a look at the source for this uh, remove link, uh, there is no JavaScript anywhere here, but there is this attribute called data confirm. And the jQuery UJS file is picking up on this attribute and adding the confirmation dialog JavaScript behavior to this link. There's also this attribute called data method, and this will trigger a delete request when this link is clicked instead of a normal get request done through the jQuery UJS file. If you're curious about how this works, you can find that jQuery UJS file within the jQuery Rails project. And if you check out the source code, you can see that the data confirm attribute is mentioned right here on a link tag. And so this is going to add special functionality to it. Now, another handy attribute is data remote. And this will help us a lot when we're adding Ajax functionality to this application. So the first thing I'm going to do is make it so when I click this new task link that it adds the form in line instead of going to a separate page uh, using Ajax. So this is what that index template looks like where I have the new task link and to flip the Ajax switch, I just have to pass in a remote option and set that to true. Now this new task link has this data remote attribute and when I try clicking on it, well, it doesn't seem like anything happens. So when you're trying to debug an Ajax issue, it can be a little difficult at first, but here are some steps to follow. First, check the uh, JavaScript console and see if there are any errors. In this case, there weren't any. Next, check the network tab and see if the request was made. And you can see uh, the request for the uh, tasks new template is right here. So we got a 200 okays response back from the server. So an error didn't happen on the Rails end, but if we check out the contents of this response, uh, this is actually HTML content, which isn't really what the JavaScript knows how to handle. Now there are many directions we can go from here. We could try to slice out the uh, form element from this response, or we could have the server send a JSON data back and uh, parse that, or we could have uh, the server send a script, actual JavaScript code back as a template, and then it will automatically execute that, which I find to be the most elegant and convenient option in most situations. So here's the current new action in the controller. And since we're not doing anything special here, but rendering a template, we can just make one specifically for JavaScript. So I'm going to make a new file here. Let's call it new.js.erb. And the first thing this should do is hide that new task link. And if I check out the index template where I'm rendering that, you can see I have this ID here called a new link. So I can reference that within this script. And I can do that by passing dollar sign parentheses, and I can pass in a selector very similar to CSS3 selectors. So I can use a pound sign and say new link to reference it, and then I can call the hide function on this. Now jQuery often maintains the current selection of elements, so if you want to perform another function on this element, it's, you can simply chain it. So here I'm also going to insert the form code directly after this new link. So I can just say after and then pass in a string of HTML, which I'm going to render out through a partial. So I'll insert some ERB content into here and render out the form partial right in line here. But since I'm inserting ERB HTML directly into uh, JavaScript, I also need to escape it with the J method call in Ruby. So there we go. So this time when I click the link, since it's coming through JavaScript, it's going to render out that JS template, which is going to have the content of that script we just wrote, which inserts the form here. Now let me try uh, creating a task. 
And when I submit this, it's going to do a full page reload here because it's not uh, set up to do Ajax requests for the form submission. That's easy enough to fix. If I go to the partial where I'm rendering out the form for the task, I can just pass the remote as true option directly into here to add that data remote attribute. And then I just need the controller to respond to a JavaScript. So I can't simply just add a template here because this has some special redirect behavior for the HTML version, but I don't want the JavaScript version to do that. So I can add a respond to block for a given format so I can change the behavior for HTML. I want that to do the redirect behavior. And for the JS version, I'm going to leave a no block passed in here because I want to render out the template for this. So this will be called createjs.erb. Now there are several things I want to do here. First of all, I'm going to remove the form since the task was submitted, and that's at the new task ID. And I'll just call remove on this. Next, I want to show the new link again. So I just call show on that. And then finally, I need to insert the new task that was created into the index template. And there's a div called incomplete tasks on there, which is where I'll put it because every new task is incomplete. And I can just append the task to it. Again here, I'm going to render out the HTML using a partial. So that's rendering out the task uh, instance that we get from the controller and escaping it with JavaScript. And let me close this off. And there we go. So this time when I create a new task, it's going to do everything in an instant through Ajax without having to reload this page. It hid the uh, remove the form it showed the new task link and added the task here. Now I can easily repeat this process for the remove link because this currently reloads the page. I'll do this quickly because it's basically the same thing. Inside the task partial is where I have this remove link and I'll just add the remote as true option. And then in the controller destroy action, I am doing a redirect here. So I'll need a respond to block like I did in the create action for handling a JS response. And I'll make a new template here called destroy.js.erb. Now inside of here, I just need to remove the task. So I need to reference it somehow. But if I take a look back at the task partial, you can see that this is inside of a form for editing the task record. And so what I can do is use an ID that Rails automatically assigns to it called edit task and then the actual ID of the task. So I can just use ERB here to enter in the task ID from the task record I got from the controller and just remove this element. And then clicking the remove link and confirming it and voila, it instantly disappears without a page reload. Next, I want to tackle marking a task as complete which currently requires I hit this update button, which is pretty clunky. Instead, I would like it so that this update button isn't there and just clicking the checkbox automatically submits the form. And we can do that with some custom JavaScript. I'm going to do this inside of this uh, tasks uh, JS coffee file, uh, which is currently blank and this will use CoffeeScript. But if you're not familiar with CoffeeScript and you prefer a uh, JavaScript that you're more comfortable with, then you can easily go back to that by simply removing the coffee extension and that will just use a plain old JavaScript. I'll just use this here and show you the CoffeeScript version at the end. So what I need to do is listen to the click event on all of the checkboxes. So I'll need to first select those. I can do so by grabbing the edit form element and then finding the input element inside of that where the type equals checkbox. And then for each of these, I'll listen to the click event and pass in a function into here. And so this will get triggered when the user clicks on it. And for now, I'll just display an alert dialog box saying that it was clicked. Now let's try this out, reloading the page and now clicking the checkbox. Hmm, it doesn't seem to do anything. We don't get our alert dialog. And if I check out the JavaScript console, there's a no mention of errors in there. The issue is that this JavaScript is interpreted immediately when it's uh, loaded in at the top of the HTML document, but the rest of the document hasn't been loaded, which means the checkboxes don't exist at this point. So instead we have to delay this code until the DOM has fully loaded. Now jQuery provides a convenient way to do this by passing in a function into the dollar sign call. And then so we can just move all this code directly into that function and that will be evaluated once the full HTML document loads. And you know what? I just realized another issue with this and that is the class name is called edit task instead of edit form. So always make sure that what you're selecting does exist on the page. 
And now when I reload the page, uh, this time when I click on the uh, checkbox, it shows me the clicked dialog. So all we need to do now is have it submit the form. To do this, I'll grab the current element, which uh, is going to be the checkbox element, and just grab the form of this. So I can call parent, and then fetch the form element of that, and then I want to submit the form, so I just pass in the submit function call. And while I'm here, I also want to remove the buttons of this form, so I can do that quite easily by just grabbing the uh, submit type, and then just calling remove on this. So that will grab multiple elements and just remove all of them in one function call. Okay, back to our app. Now when I reload the page, uh, the buttons will disappear and clicking on a checkbox submits the form, it works. And it goes the other way too. If I click on a checkbox here, it'll bring it back. Now I just need to make this form Ajax enabled like I did before. So I'm going to do that really quickly here, just passing remote as true. And then going into the task controller where I have this update action, I need to uh, respond to the JavaScript format. And then I can make a new template here for JS ERB version. Now I'm just going to paste in the code for this template just to save us some time. And my goal here is to move the task from one list to the other. So first I'll see if the task is currently complete and if it is, then I'll grab that task element and move it to the complete tasks. And otherwise I'll move it to the incomplete tasks list. By the way, I've been using a lot of jQuery functions in this episode and you can find them all nicely documented on their site and they're split up into uh, different categories here. And the uh, pen to function is inside the manipulation section. And you can find it here and just see all the reference documentation for it to find out how it works. With that done, our application is pretty much complete. Uh, we can uncheck this or check it to instantly move it from one list to the other or create new tasks instantly. But there is a bug here. If I create a new task and try to check it, well, there's two issues. One is that the update uh, button is showing up and also that the check mark uh, doesn't trigger the uh, form submission. Now, the problem is that this code right here is what will fix the issue, but this only gets executed when the page initially loads and so it won't apply to the new tasks. Uh, to solve this, uh, one way is just to move this off into a function. That way we can trigger it whenever we add a new task. This is a good chance to demonstrate how jQuery plugins work. Uh, basically, it's just a function that you can call on a selected element. So what I'm going to do here is uh, this is the way I want it to work. So I select a form element such as the edit task form, and then I want to call a custom function on it. Let's say uh, submit on check. And so this will add in that behavior. Now getting this to work is actually pretty easy. You just call jQuery.fn and then pass in that name, which is submit on check, and set this to a function. And then you just need to perform that same logic in here. So I'll just paste this in. However, we'd want to reference the form element that we have selected. So we can use this right here in this function to reference that selector. And we can use find on here to find the submit button and the checkbox, which is inside of that form. And that will allow me to uh, find those elements and perform that same operation on any form I want. And I also need to return this selector so that we can chain other calls onto it if we want to. So with that done, I can now change the create template, which is where I'm rendering out the new task that was added, which contains the form I want to apply that same function call to. So it'll look something like this, where I reference the form, which uh, is for that new task, and just call submit on check on it. Let's give this a try. Now when I create a new task, it doesn't show me the button, and also clicking on it will check it instantly. So that works. So our Ajax functionality is now complete, and as promised, uh, let me paste in the CoffeeScript version of the JavaScript file here, so you could use CoffeeScript if you want to. I really like it. Uh, I cover it more in episode 267 if you're interested. Now there's one more thing I want to point out before I go, and that is in the index action where I'm listing out the tasks, I am sleeping for one second. And that's just more to exaggerate the fact that the page is reloading so that you can more clearly see the effects of Ajax. And uh, that's sort of just a quick technique to more simulate real world activity where it actually takes a little while for the page to load because sometimes it's difficult to get that effect when it's just loading it on your local machine. And that's all I have for this episode on jQuery and Ajax. I hope you found it useful.